Um, let, let's move on to Marta. I, d I actually didn't, I gave Marta a very brief introduction before. Actually, before Marta was working with us, she was with the Italian Treasury. And the Italian Treasury is lost. It's corruption that made you. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Would I, would I do a stereotype like that? But uh, no, what I was going to say was something nice, which is that the Italian Treasury's loss was um, certainly our gain. And, and actually, Marta is leading a really fantastic team here in ODI working on governance. And, and I think, you know, really doing it at the coalface, of looking sort of very, in a very concrete way at specific problems, specific sectors and countries. And I know you only got seven minutes, but maybe if you could try and summarise some of that really rich research experience. I'll do. I'll, um, what I'd like to do is not summarise the research, because I think that um, research at the moment on this agenda, looking at in what ways governance can inform programmes to improve service delivery, has come to, you know, has been as confronted with a very particular challenge, which is that research, governance research, political economy analysis and, and similar uh, type of research has you know, consistently uh, demonstrated that issues of politics and governance are indeed undermining uh, potentially the effective delivery of services and this is particularly uh, the case for the most marginalised of the poorest and yet practitioners, policy makers, sectoral, um, in particular sectoral and technical advisors in different sectors have been asking us for some time the so what question. So to what extent this research that demonstrates that the problem is real is telling us anything useful on what can be done differently. And what I want to try to do in these seven minutes is suggest that um, we have, um, that there are, you know, there are op reasons to be optimistic about why that question of the so, you know, the so what questions um, can be answered and how perhaps collectively we are at a point in time where we can do something about moving on this agenda you know, beyond, you know, rec the recognition of the problem to what can be done differently about it. And it is probably the case that the debates around post-2015 and the importance of discussions about service delivery in development uh, might be a good opportunity to show that um, some of those issues are, um, you know, are moving in the right direction in terms of what can be done about it. So um, let me give you a few reasons why I'm optimistic. So a list of good news, so to speak. The first good news is that research and governance research in particular that has looked into sectoral dynamics um, has definitely moved on from generic conclusions about the fact that context and politics matter and all of this is terribly complicated and messy and very little can be done about it to first of all show, you know, to, to reveal a lot more details and analytical um, refinement about how that matters. So work that's going on at ODI and elsewhere, for example, looking at what are some of the common um, recurring cons political and governance constraints in different sectors that help to explain, you know, teacher absenteeism and 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 and, and some of the other challenges, for example, about human resources in health and how, you know, uh, there are common issues uh, that shape the, the you know political and governance system that ex help to explain um, some of those problems. Um, so, um, so the first is this, uh, this idea that research moves on from context matters to how it matters, and that gives the sort of the you know the next step is then to you know to dis to, to see what can be done about some of those problems, and this is perhaps where sort of the most exciting developments have occurred in the last couple of years because a number of researchers involved in the diagnosis of these problems have started to you know to discuss what, you know, what the types of solutions could look like in practice. So first of all, I think Rukmini made a very strong case of why you know, the, the understanding of the problem remains the crucial part, and also whether political commitment can be measured, because it's only a real understanding of what the problem is that is the first step towards a feasible solution. The good news there is that diagnostic tools and very practical hands-on guidance on how we can go about understanding what the nature of the problem is is now available, is available through research that has been done at the eye, is available through, you know, think of the work that Matt Andrews has done recently on problem-driven iterative adaptation. So from all of that body of work, increasingly there is some very concrete guidance on how one can do, can go about a good uh, diagnostic of the problem and uh, an exploration of the space for solution. Um, and I think practice is also uh, showing some, you know, there are reasons for good news. I mean, Shanta just mentioned how in the bank they are using, for example, project preparation funding to do research that is specifically aimed at nailing that problem in a, in a, in a way that can be directly then um, um, 
can be direct, can, can be directly built into program design. All things that not that long ago, you know, we thought we were stuck with. So this problem of creating the knowledge, understanding the problem, that not going hand in hand with any efforts to turn that into programmatic choices. So some good news there. Um, the other good news is that I think we are beyond the idea that the fact that this problem are very complex means that they're not tractable. I mean, what these these more sophisticated diagnostics are actually helping to detect what elements of the problems, and particularly the you know some of the political blockages, which ones are those that can be, you know, that can be dealt with, and what are the conditions for you know where, when some of the more systemic ones can be addressed, at what levels they can be addressed, and what external actors can do um, can do about it. What research is showing that that does require a way of working that is not perhaps what is in the mainstream. We had you know, some discussion earlier today about what you know, flexible, incremental, iterative ways of working looks like in practice, but in practice it does mean you know, putting a little money, money first to try some ideas, be able to go back to it if in case it's wrong, being able to change directions. So there are, you know, there are, these are, you know, they're not easy ways for external actors or, uh, or others that support service delivery programs to go through, but there are good example, increasingly good example of that that can be done. Um, another very clear set of, you know, practical guidance how to go about it is the go local. I think um, uh, John touched on that. I mean, as long as the focus of service delivery support and programming focus at the national level and on large scale national programs, they're probably not getting, not just at the heart of the problem, but they're not getting, you know, they're not starting at the point where things can be done. I mean, um, Rukmini gave a very good example of how starting local with an example where there was an opportunity to experiment with new ideas worked out and how much that was, you know, the, the right ingredient to be able to widen the, the um, you know, the, to widen the, the conversation in other states. So, again, for donors, this is a very practical recommendation about, you know, working at the more local level. And also the fact that this is large an agenda for domestic actors, something that John mentioned in relation to the school example of the importance of not necessarily having donors involved all the time. It doesn't mean that donors shouldn't have a role. Um, there are increasingly references to models and ways of working that might in involve intermediaries or actors that are not, you know, they're not necessarily involved in a, in, a, in a funding relationship that actually can make a difference in the way they relate with the, with the local actors and working what exists. So given this relative optimism about the fact that we know quite a lot about what can be done, why is it the case that progress is not as, um, as much as we, as we would expect? Again, I mean, some reason for optimism. We discussed earlier today the elephant in the room being pressure to spend and the fact that as long as the donors are mainly in the business of getting money out of the door that will inherently limit their capacity to work in different ways. But actually there's plenty, there are examples from different uh, agencies of how that is not necessarily um, uh, you know, impeding practice. There are in a, there are a number of examples have come up where you know, in smaller ways, uh, using, ex you know, using pockets of funding that are, have that flexibility built in. Um, and you know, in, in, in different sectors, there is the possibility of working and operating in a fashion that allows for s at least some element of the flexibility and adaptation that we all recognize is needed to be able to move progress. So the proposition on the table is that I think the research agenda needs to grab this mood for optimism to actually go a bit deeper on what would it take in practice to overcome some of these uh, blockages, knowing that the evidence shows that there are ways um, to go about it. Thanks, Martha. That, that, that was great. Um, I, th I think what I'm going to do, if it's okay with you, like, rather than me ask you a question, given that you're in the office right opposite me, <laughs> Um, I, we'll, we'll throw it open at this point to just give people an opportunity to um, debate, and if you want, you, uh, also for you to debate with John and with Meaning. Um, so I'm going to start from over this side. If I could ask you, you to say who you are Speaking and to much. keep the question or the contribution relatively short, just so we can get in as many uh, contributions as possible. So, please. <coughs> 